Hi, how do you do? Today we will be taking a little ride back to the past. We will be revisiting the former Aptera to find out the various reasons that made the company fail in the first place, and we'll be looking at what Aptera is doing differently now to avoid that from happening again. By the end of this video, you'll understand why it's so difficult to start and succeed in the automotive sector. In short, starting a car company takes a huge amount of money, and if the cash runs out at any point, the company will die. Over the last weeks of the former Aptera's lifespan, an interview was conducted with former CEO of the company, Paul Wilbur, and former marketing VP, Marcus McCammon, who were there to the very end of Aptera's reign. Conversations were also had at length with company founder Steve Fambro, who resigned his seat on the Aptera board of directors and was replaced by Wilbur as CEO in September of 2008. From all of these sources, we've compiled this inside chronology of the events that led to the end of Aptera. Hi, this is Echo Electric, where we talk about all things concerning EVs. Remember to like the video. If you're enjoying our content, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay connected. Before we get into the video, I'd like to pass on a special message regarding one of our core team members here at Echo Electric. Lewin is a founding writer and editor here at Echo Electric. He is a sickler and has lost two siblings to this disease. Lewin has battled the dreaded sickle cell disease all his life, and his health keeps deteriorating as the days go by. Despite the severe, debilitating pain episodes, frequent hospitalization, and bed rest recommendations, Lewin still puts up with creating the unique content we put out here. Lewin is indeed a fighter, and the best we can do for him as a team is to help him stay healthy. Lewin's health can be completely restored with a bone marrow transplant and a bilateral hip replacement, so we call on all our audience and fans to donate and see that he gets these surgeries. We'll really wish that he stays healthy. We hope you want that too. Please check out his GoFundMe campaign in the description below. Thanks for listening to this special announcement to the end. Now, let's get into the video. Through several hours of conversations and interviews, a few things were made clear. The first is that the car designed by founders Fambro and Wilbur was not the car Aptera ended up developing. It created a longer, larger version of the Aptera 2 E3 wheeler, as named at the time, to comply with the 738 separate federal motor vehicle safety standards covering cars that may legally be sold. After it became clear that funding a three-wheeler wasn't possible, the company switched gears in January and threw all its design resources into creating the 4E, a four-seat, four-wheeled car using the same plastic composite body shell construction as the original three-wheelers. Wilbur and McCammon believed the company came very close to surviving and suggested that years of discussions with the Department of Energy over its advanced technology vehicle manufacturing loan program ultimately took too long, dooming Aptera to run out of cash. That $25 billion program offered low-interest loans to automakers and parts companies that would use the money to retool existing plants to build advanced technology vehicles with fuel efficiency at least 25% higher than vehicles they replaced. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Rather, let's look at a quick rundown of events from the company's creation in 2006. In 2006, founders Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony started Aptera to build an ultra-efficient three-wheel electric car to be registered as a motorcycle. And in September 2008, Paul Wilbur was hired as CEO, replacing Fambro. Hi, I'm Paul Wilbur, President and CEO of Aptera. This is the Aptera 2E. It's in December 2008, Aptera was rejected for the ATVM loan application within three days because three wheelers are not defined as cars. In June 2009, Tesla received $365 million of low interest loans under the same Department of Energy's ATVM program. And in September 2009, Fisker, too, was awarded a sum of $529 million in loans under the ATVM program. In October 2009, three-wheeled vehicles were officially defined as cars for the purposes of the ATVM program. January 2010, 
Aptera then resubmitted the application for loans to build both the 2E and a newly developed four-wheeled four-seat vehicle. In late 2010, assessment of the 2E portion of the business plan indicated that Aptera would not have been able to pay back capital costs under their sales projections, which was a fraction of Aptera's own numbers. 2011 finds Aptera shifting all of its development efforts to the 4E, a four-door, four-seat electric sedan that it believes has a better shot at getting funding. And in September of 2011, a conditional commitment letter was issued for $150 million of loans to loaning Aptera if the company could raise $80 million privately. Thought to be unrelated. On November 2011, the Department of Energy turned down the ATVM loan application submitted by Next Auto Works for its low-cost, plastic-bodied, basic economy car design. From November to December of 2011, investors spooked by the Next Auto Works denial refused Aptera's requests for further operating funds. And finally, on December 2, 2011, Aptera Motors regrettably shut down. If Wilbur was to be believed, Aptera simply ran out of time amidst a loss of confidence by its investors. Surely the political controversy around half a billion dollars of the Department of Energy's loan to the failed solar panel maker, Solyndra, didn't help Aptera's case. There was also a small issue over the low 20 miles per gallon EPA gas mileage rating for the 2012 Fisker Karma Range Extended Electric Luxury Sports Sedan. With the presidential election year coming up, Wilbur mentioned that the ATVM program could go away completely. No big-name investor stepped up to carry up Terra in the way Next Auto Works had famed Silicon Valley venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins to lead its funding. Wilbur said, We wanted to do the right thing for our employees, closing the company while there was still enough cash to pay them a small amount of severance. Which was very unfortunate, and probably the hardest decision they ever had to make as CEOs. In the end, Wilbur said, if he had it to do over again, he would avoid the bright shiny object disease of the Department of Energy loans. He spent three and a half years at the company pursuing energy department loan funding, logging time in Washington, D.C., in endless meetings with government officials and lobbyists. Because Tesla and Fisker got loans, we listened to that too much, Wilbur admitted. We should have raised the money ourselves rather than relying on the DOE. There's a broader question, of course. Was a three-wheeled two-seater ever going to sell the 20000 per year that its executives touted? Perhaps now they could, but probably not at that time. All three men pointed to the 5,000 Californians who placed a deposit of $500 to get on the list for an Aptera 2E when the car went into production. The car that those 5,000 investors put down deposits for was Fambro's concept although he does not feel that the final design stayed true to his original vision. Nonetheless, the ATVM program is one that's meant to allow companies to bootstrap technology to get more efficient vehicles into the hands of many drivers more quickly. That's why Ford had been the single largest recipient of loans thus far, getting a whopping $5.9 billion to roll out its EcoBoost line of smaller, more efficient gasoline engines across its entire model range. Lingering questions about the collapse. Many more questions remain about Aptera's collapse, which was endlessly debated, but we got some answers to a few of them. One of the more prominent questions at the time concerned the DOE conditional letter of commitment and the question of whether it really existed. Both Wilbur and McCammon mentioned emphatically that it did. McCammon provided a scan of a cover sheet for such a document, dated September 13, 2011. But the official letter was never seen, although McCammon offered to show it to a reporter in person. He also provided a heavily redacted email, which he stated was from a DOE official, although it cannot be confirmed from the scan that refers to a letter addressing the status of Aptera's application, and is dated October 19, 2011. Presuming that the DOE did issue a conditional commitment letter, it refused to comment on Aptera. It's worth noting that Aptera executives claim it required the company to raise $80 million of matching funds to obtain the DOE low-interest loans, and its executives were unable to do that. What happened to all the deposits? Wilbur claims the majority of the deposits had been returned, 
though they mentioned they were having a hard time finding some depositors. Did Aptera take two e-deposits even after it knew it was dropping the development of the car? To answer this, Wilbur said that although the website didn't drop its offer to take deposits until June, the company disabled the back end in January, so no deposits could actually be accepted. If any potential Aptera buyers were able to put down a deposit on a 2E after January, that would contradict the ex-CEO's claim. It isn't easy to verify the validity of that information, seeing as they're more than 19 years old as of the making of this video. The one thing consoling about this story was the return of Aptera and the numerous successes they've had so far. It's good to see that the company was able to learn from its past mistakes and do a course correction. Well, that's all for today's video, but what's your opinion? Do you think Aptera has a better chance the second time around? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this coming in the future. And if you feel touched to contribute to Lewin's treatment, don't forget to check out the GoFundMe page in the description below. Thank you, and thanks for watching.